the scene of the Falcon 9's booster successfully landing while its second stage returns to Earth has become the most anticipated scene for every SpaceX Falcon 9 mission. However, this was not the case for the European Space Agency's Hara asteroid mission, which launched on October 7th. It's sad, but it's a necessary trade-off for the FAA to approve the Falcon 9 to return to flight after a few-day grounding. But is that the primary reason why the FAA gave SpaceX a concession this time? Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. After nine days of landing, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket finally got the sole ticket to launch the European Space Agency's Hara mission. The launch happened on October 7th at 10.52 a.m. EDT from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in coastal Florida. Hera successfully separated from the upper stage of its Falcon 9 rocket about one hour and 16 minutes after liftoff. ESA's Hera spacecraft soared into a cloudy sky above Florida to begin a multi-million mile trek across the solar system to the binary asteroid system Didymos. It became famous in September 2022 after NASA smacked its DART, double asteroid redirect mission, into Didymos' smaller companion, Dimorphos. That impact altered the orbit of Dimorphos, demonstrating the utility of a planetary defense strategy that could help keep Earth safe from rogue asteroids in the future. Hera will follow up on the DART mission to check on its aftermath. Unlike typical SpaceX launches, the October 7th mission didn't witness the landing of Falcon 9's first stage booster, called B-1061, due to the additional performance required to deliver the payload to an interplanetary transfer orbit. This mission marks the 23rd and final launch for this Falcon 9 first stage booster. In order to launch Hera on its asteroid mission, SpaceX had to use all the fuel on the Falcon 9 booster for the launch. B-1061 launched two crewed missions, Crew-1 and Crew-2, but most launches for this workhorse have been supply runs to the International Space Station and satellites for different space companies and global government operations. Most of its later launches have been done from California. In addition to B-1061 sacrifice, the second stage in this mission will not re-enter. This aims to be in exchange for the FAA's approval for the launch of the Hera mission. The agency said it has determined that the absence of a second stage re-entry for this mission adequately mitigates the primary risk to the public in the event of a reoccurrence of the mishap experienced with the Crew-9 mission. Deorbit burn is a compulsory procedure for a controlled re-entry, but in the Hera mission, the second stage doesn't conduct the deorbit burn, so it would remain in orbit until atmospheric drag gradually pulls it down. Its purpose is to avoid a repeat of the incident on the Crew-9 mission on September 28th, where the Falcon 9's second stage failed to ignite the engine for a standard deorbit burn. The malfunction caused the upper stage to land in the ocean outside its target disposal area. Subsequently, the FAA grounded SpaceX's Falcon 9 fleet and required SpaceX to investigate the root cause. Of course, currently solely the Hera mission is authorized to launch. The FAA is not clearing other Falcon 9 missions where the second stage does a deorbit burn. SpaceX has completed the Crew-9 mishap report and delivered it to the FAA on October 4th. Safety will drive the timeline for the FAA to complete its review of SpaceX's Crew-9 mishap investigation report and when the agency will authorize Falcon 9 to return to regular operations, the U.S. federal agency stated. There may be another reason why the FAA partially eased the ban on SpaceX. It is the European Space Agency. At an October 2nd briefing, ESA officials stressed the need to launch the crucial asteroid mission on Falcon 9 on time. At the ESA briefing, Ian Carnelli, project manager for Hera at ESA, said, We will be ready to launch on October 7th, he said, pending approval from the FAA to allow Falcon 9 launches to resume. We are basically hoping we get it by Sunday, October 6th. He added that ESA is willing to have Hera be the return to flight mission for the Falcon 9, rather than wait for SpaceX to launch one or more missions, such as those carrying Starlink satellites first. Apparently, ESA doesn't need to wait until October 6th to get the green light from the FAA since shortly two days later, the U.S. agency stated it approved the Falcon 9 for one mission only, the Hera launch. That day coincided with the day SpaceX submitted the Crew-9 mishap report to the FAA. It's fair to say that this is a rare act of agility on the FAA's part in handling paperwork, a far cry from their bureaucracy in working with SpaceX. Another time when the FAA also decided quickly was in the CERT-2 mission of ULA's Vulcan Centaur. 
although the mission also hit an anomaly equivalent to what happened to SpaceX's Falcon 9, meaning no public injuries or public property damage, the FAA immediately stated that it determined no investigation is warranted at this time. Meanwhile, Falcon 9's case is totally in contrast. The U.S. federal agency always requires an investigation, or even grounds the rocket's fleet whenever the rocket meets an anomaly. SpaceX's CEO, Elon Musk, is too familiar with the FAA's working style, so this time around, we didn't hear any concerns from SpaceX regarding the Hera mission's timeline. Regarding the Crew-9 incident and investigation, SpaceX has not provided additional details or updates. Elon Musk, even though he is usually active in sharing information about company activities, including during the previous upper stage anomaly in July, has been uncharacteristically silent on the topic of X. In fact, preparations for the October 7th mission continued as usual, despite the fact that the Falcon 9 remains grounded. My guess is that by launching Hera on time, SpaceX may have understood the root cause and fixed the problem on the Falcon 9. We will resume launches once we have a better understanding of the root cause, they previously said. The bottom line here is always the FAA, but the ESA has solved them all. The most reliable vehicle launcher in the world. For a long time, SpaceX has prided itself on being the most reliable vehicle launcher in the world. This has been proven by the jaw-dropping achievements of the Falcon 9 workhorse rocket and the Falcon family. Rockets from the Falcon 9 family have been launched 389 times over 14 years, resulting in 386 full successes which translates to a remarkable success rate of 99.23%. Among that, Falcon 9 first stage boosters landed successfully in 353 of 365 attempts, or 96.7% comma, with 328 out of 333 at 98.5% for the Falcon 9 Block 5 version. A total of 324 reflights of first stage boosters have all successfully launched their payloads. On April 12th, Space has set a reusability mark with the 20th launch of the Falcon 9's first stage. Two weeks later, the company tied its rocket reuse record with the 20th launch of a different Falcon 9 booster. Notably, just less than a month ago, the company had made a big bang with the 19th liftoff for the vehicle. Fast forward to October, with the 23rd launch of B-1061, a new record is about to be broken. This is indeed a huge step forward in maximizing rocket reusability, and would further solidify SpaceX's position as a leader in space transportation. Also thanks to its reusability, the Falcon 9 has become the most launched American rocket in history, and it has delivered far more payload mass to orbit than China and the rest of the world combined. In 2023, the total payload mass sent by SpaceX to orbit is 1,195 tons of payloads, accounting for 80% of the globe. As I mentioned above, the low cost is SpaceX's competitive advantage. Launch costs for the Falcon series are capped at $3,000 per kilogram, which is significantly lower than the global commercial spaceflight market average of $10,000 to $20,000 per kilogram. However, instead of settling in his comfort zone, Elon Musk continues to set his sights on conquering bigger milestones, 90% of all Earth's payload to orbit later in 2024. Given SpaceX's current progress pace, the feasibility of that goal is off the table. With incredible achievements and huge ambitions, it would be ridiculous for the FAA administrator to put SpaceX in the same position as a trouble plane maker, Boeing. I think Boeing and SpaceX should have the same oversight. They should all have SMS safety management systems. They should all have whistleblower programs, he said. Michael Whitaker's unlogical statement to Congress during the Transportation Committee hearing on September 24th immediately added to his humiliation. There is a huge gap between SpaceX, the most reliable vehicle launcher, and a troubled plane maker Boeing who is notorious for plane crashes and spacecraft failures to bring astronauts home. The FAA is on track to reach its target of adding 55 inspectors to Boeing and Spirit Aerosystems facilities by the end of the year, according to Whitaker, who estimated the agency has thus far hired between 40 and 50 inspectors. That doesn't mean SpaceX should be subject to such strict regulations, however. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.